Hello everybody. For today's parish update, I thought I'd give you a short reflection on the gospel we would hear at today's Mass. It comes from the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 6, and I just noticed a few fascinating things in there that I'd like to share with you. So, here we go. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, his disciples saw him walking on the water. Next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side saw that only one boat had been there and that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that the disciples had set off by themselves. Other boats, however, had put in from Tiberias near the place where the bread had been eaten. When the people saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into those boats and crossed to Capernaum to look for Jesus. When they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, you are not looking for me because you have seen the signs, but because you had all the bread you wanted to eat. Do not work for food that cannot last, but work for food that endures to eternal life, the kind of food the Son of Man is offering you, for on him the Father, God himself, has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? Jesus gave them this answer. This is working for God. You must believe in the one he has sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what struck me about this Gospel as I was reading it at Mass this morning was... Uh, just the, the opening sentence uh, and how uh, blasé St. John seems to be about these two incredible miracles that Jesus has performed. I mean, listen to the opening line again. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, his disciples saw him walking on water. No explanation, no background. He's just walked on water. If you saw someone walking on water, wouldn't it blow you away? Wouldn't you be telling all your friends? Wouldn't you be trying to find out how it happened? Well, yeah. In fact, in, in the Synoptic Gospels, you know, this story, Matthew, Mark and Luke, is told in, in great detail at different angles. This is a huge miracle. You know, Jesus is displaying his mastery over nature. He's showing that he has the power of God in himself. In fact, he's revealing himself as divine. This is big news. Having just fed the 5,000, he's displayed his ability to feed a multitude. I mean, imagine how attractive that would have been to so many people. This guy is the answer to our prayers. We need never go hungry again. And yet John looks past it. Or does he? Does he rather look more deeply into it? Remember, Matthew, Mark and Luke were writing at a time when this stuff needed to be recorded. They were getting the raw reaction to the things that Jesus was doing. But John... He's had some time in writing his gospel. He's reflecting not on the events themselves as historical data. He takes it for granted. Rather, he's going deeper into the meaning of the miracles. And that's why John calls miracles signs. Everything that Jesus does is a sign pointing to who he really is and what the purpose of his mission is to save us. For example, let's look at the two miracles that I outlined here. After Jesus had fed the 5,000, what's the gut response to that if you've just been on the, on the good side of that miracle? End of world hunger. Okay, we need never starve again. This guy, let's, let's exploit this miracle. In fact, if God was so great, he could take away our hunger like that. Perhaps that's how we see God in time of famine. You know, well, if God is so great, you know, why doesn't he do what Jesus did in feeding the 5,000? Jesus displaying his mastery over our material well-being, surely, on a superficial level, would say to us, hmm, maybe he can supply for that as well. And if he doesn't, maybe he's not that great. And then the second one, he's walking over water, mastery over nature. And we think, well, in the times of COVID, can't he just 
take it away? Why, you know, why are we going through this coronavirus? You know, if God has the power just to heal us, as he evidently does, why doesn't he do it? Because he's not a God who is just going to take away our problems. He's not going to put things on a plate for us as a parent does for a child. He's not going to liberate us from the problems and strifes of living in the natural world. No. He wants us to be free. He wants us to choose our love for him. And the only way that he can do that is by sharing in our trials and tribulations. By feeding us in a way that does sustain us beyond the limits of natural life. You see, often we can pray for things and expect and hope for things which are just going to add an extension to our natural life. Jesus, although he's interested in it, and although he does share a lot in it, is pointing us to a life which infinitely exceeds the bounds of our mortal lives. And that's why his miracles are signs. And that's why he often tires of people in his ministry who only see the superficial side of what he's doing. It's right here in the gospel. I ask him, Rabbi, when did you come here? They're trying to get to the bottom of, of the feeding of the 5,000 and, and the crossing of the water on foot. And Jesus says, almost you can feel the pain in his heart. I tell you most solemnly, you're not looking for me because you have seen the signs. You have not seen me eucharistically, but because you had all the bread you wanted to eat. If we live on this level, in our relationship with God. If I'm a good boy, if I ask, God's gonna get me through the next day. He's gonna supply me with material wealth. I'm gonna have money, I'm gonna have food in my belly, the pantry's gonna be full. Then we'll never enter into a relationship with him because we know that all relationships that are worthwhile exceed these things. They might start that way. You know, good relationship normally starts with a good meal. They don't end that way, do they? They don't continue in that way. And the eternal life that he wants us to receive is deeper. Food is just a sign. And that deeper relationship is to share with him in what is his, rather than just giving us what we think we need. And similarly, in this time of great suffering, this time of lockdown. He wants us to see beyond our exasperation and cling on to the signs of hope that we find in our suffering. Remember, he didn't spare himself from the catastrophe of death. In fact, he accepted it. He went to the cross rather than perform some miracle which could have performed a similar act. He wanted to show us that he was right there in the midst of our suffering. That true life consists in enduring and seeing past and through the limits that life places upon us. And the power that overcomes that limit can be summed up in one word. And that word is love. <laughs>